Okay, so what's special about this engine? It's our oldest engine, 1873. It ran a lace factory until 1940. And then it was, factory was closed down, the engine was left, and we acquired it in 1982 when somebody wrote to me and said, there's a lovely of cordless engine in the factory in Newdigate Street in Nottingham, looking for a good home. So we went up there, dismantled it, took it back to Norfolk, Bearing in mind it hadn't run since 1940. We reinstalled it into the museum. And because we were putting all the steam pipes up at that time, we thought, well, we might as well connect the engine to the steam pipe system. Never expected that we would be able to run it straight away. The next time we had steam on the boiler, we flicked over the steam valve, and away she went. Couldn't believe it. Not run since 1940. And you can imagine, I mean, she probably didn't have much maintenance done on her in the latter years. And in fact, we even know that she's got a 1940s nail in a very important part holding that little clip in. We reckon that they weren't allowed to use split pins at that stage because they were probably being used on split bar engines. So the lace factories had to make do with old rusty nails. I've not changed that nail, that must be the original one. And she still works. Now the thing about making lace or any sort of weaving is it's very important to have the engine running at a constant speed so that all the looms are also running at a constant speed. Otherwise, you get variations in the quality of the cloth because the distance between the threads will change. And this is where this valve here comes in. It was invented by an American called George Corliss and they were looking for a system to run weaving factories. The actual factory was driven a vertical shaft off the end of the flywheel shaft and it went to seven different floors. So there was no way the engine driver could actually see what was happening upstairs. And if you imagine, as the bobbins are changed, you could have a situation where all the looms were running, none of the looms were running, or any combination. So the load on the engine was infinitely variable and was changing all the time. Now what this engine does, Rather than controlling the distance that the valve travels, the valve is a different sort. It goes right across the whole cylinder width and opens and closes like a big slot. So if you imagine the, there's the valve. It's opening and closing as a big slot. That means that every time the valve opens, you get full steam going through. But what you control is the amount of time that you allow the valve to stay open. And that's where the governor comes in, because the governor will sense the load on the engine. Let's just imagine they put on a whole another 20 loops, or all suddenly well being put on. What would happen is the engine would start to slow down. The governor's balls would drop. That would alter the setting on here, and we set this valve to open for a longer time. The engine would then pick up speed until it gets to the governor at the proper control position and then it just coasts along. Obviously I've had to do that right, slightly back to front because I've had to take the steam off to show you it's slowing down because I haven't got any looms upstairs, so it's just Jane making the tea. Yeah? And this was, as I said, a very early version of it. And of course it was quite noisy, but they didn't really worry about noise in those days. I mean, health and safety hadn't really come in, had it? Um, but as, as this was developed, of course, lots of other engineers picked it up and um, it became much more refined. People often ask about, you know, how, why is a cylinder made of wood? The wood slats are just to hold the insulation material in. Underneath that is a proper cast iron cylinder weapon. I'll just slow it down again. People often ask us, what's the teapot doing on the, um... yeah. It isn't actually full of tea. It's full of the world's most beautiful um, nectar. Have a, little, have a little whiff of that. That's pure steam oil. Now you have to keep it hot, because when it gets cold, it gets very stiff. So we keep our steam oil 
in a teapot on there, ready for And there's also a jug as well, just to top up. Now I want to show you something that perhaps would horrify you if this was on your motor car that you came to the museum in today. But it does show why steam engines were just such an amazing piece of kit because they would run under the most appalling conditions. Apart from using a rusty nail to uh, hold the engine together, if you look at the whole sort of... It's all on the joggle, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, if that was your main piston in your, in your car, I mean, you'd definitely be going to the garage, wouldn't you? But, um, you know, this is why steam engines were such amazing things. They, they did tolerate huge amounts of abuse, but still provided the power to keep things going. Yeah. Yeah. The notches in the flywheel, again, of course, is to bar the engine round if you have, happen to stop it in the wrong position. Um, so there we are. Our oldest lady, um, she's called... Jane D, because she came from the Jane D factory, and I happened to marry somebody called Jane Davis, so isn't that just lucky, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is her engine, really. She's not as old as the engine, but she's, she's as beautiful as. Yeah.